when in this video, I'll just you know show how to make four different reagents. One would be Brady's reagent, otherwise known as um, what do you call it? 2,4-DNPH. Yeah, I know how this cuts because some of it, you know, when you're dealing with it, it kind of got out. That's all right. The other one is Lucas reagent, chromic acid, and Jones reagent. Of course, chromic acid you can purchase if you want to spend hundreds of dollars on it, but if you want to make it yourself, that's a different story. Of course, Brady's reagent, you want to dissolve 40 grams of 2, 4, or dinitrophenyl hydrazine in 80 80 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. You want to cool it and add 900 milliliters of methanol and 100 milliliters of water. That's, you know, you can obviously... I apologize, somebody came in as I was doing the video. I had to get something done. But anyways, you can obviously change, you know, alternate the, you know, <clears throat> you know, you can obviously change how much you add, you know. For example, we do four grams of the 2,4-dinitrile phenylhydrazine and eight milliliters of sulfuric acid and 90 milliliters of methanol and 10 milliliters of water to get this amount. You know, we have two of these full. It makes it a lot easier. You don't really need a whole liter jug or whatever, you know. And basically, you know, it's, if, a, if a carbonyl compound is aromatic, it's going to have a red precipitate. If it's aliphatic, it's yellow precipitate because it tests for carbonyl groups associated with aldehydes and ketones. That's mainly what I'm showing is, you know, how to, you know, this is all for aldehydes, ketones, you know, phenols and carboxylic acids, things like that. Because, you know, in organic chemistry too, we just recently gave our students, you know, an unknown. To get an unknown compound, they have to determine if it's a, if it has a you know, it's a ketone, aldehyde, you know, and whatnot. And they did pretty good as usual. But anyways, let's go to the next one. Well, this one is Jones reagent. You know, you mix 25 grams of chromium trioxide with concentrated sulfuric acid to a paste, then dilute with water to 75 milliliters. And I do recommend highly that you look up what, what they test for and everything. And, you know, because, you know, Jones reagent, you'd have to use the Tollens, which doesn't look like I took out, but I'll get it out since I have to pause all this anyways. But this is the Jones reagent. And here we have Tollens reagent. Anatomical silver nitrate Tollens reagent. Tollens reagent, you add sodium hydroxide solution to silver nitrate to form a precipitate. Then you add dilute ammonia solution until precipita precipitate dissolves. It detects the presence of aldehydes aromatic aldehydes, positive precipitation and uh, of silver, you know, it gives you like a silver mirror on your test tube or whatever. That means you've had al you had an aldehyde. It means you had an aldehyde. Uh, the thing is you need to know about tollens as you do not, of course you should never pour chemicals down the drain anyways, but this one you definitely do not because it forms silver fulamorate or something. I forgot exactly what's called silver something. I don't remember. But anyways, if you pour it down the drain you're going to cause a, an explosion. You could cause an explosion. In fact, you can't even store this for a long time. You have to keep it away. That's why we make small amounts so they use all of it. The next one is, of course, is going to be Lucas reagent, which I don't have to pause this because it's right here and right next to it, thankfully. But that's, cause, yeah, I'm, I don't have everything like memorized off the top of my head. I do know because I have to make these things, but you know, still you have to look up the stuff though. But basically, you're going to add concentrate sulfuric acid in 50 milliliters graduate cylinder. Then you, of course, place a 100 milliliter beaker in ice, and then you weigh out 62.5 grams of zinc chloride. And it has to be anhydrous zinc chloride, of course. And that's your, going to give you a Lucas reagent. But just so you know about the Lucas reagent, I just mainly sometimes just add zinc. I have, I personally have just added zinc to hydrochloric acid and it seems to work. But you should add the zinc chloride if that's what, that is what the instructions say. And, and the zinc chloride has to be anhydrous because zinc chloride does seem to like to dissolve water. I mean absorb water from the air. So you might want to make it anhydrous if you can. Chromic acid. 
Now this is one of the things, well, well here's, I'm sorry, let's first continue on Lucas reagent, I forgot. You know, zinc chloride and high HCl, you know, it uses, it's used to classify alcohols. Positive to clear turbid signaling formation of chloroalkanes. You, I suggest you look up, you know, you can see how the primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols react. One of them, I believe, gives an immediately reaction. Second one, you know, takes about five minutes, and the third one, I think it's tertiary alcohols, you have to heat it up. And here we have, of course, the chromic acid, which this bottle needs to be cleaned, of course, as you may be saying, the bottle needs to be cleaned. Chromic acid is, uh, you know, you take 10 grams of the sodium dichromate crystals, make it into a slurry with a few milliliters of water, then dissolve in 250 milliliters, concentrated in a sulfuric acid with stirring and cooling ice bath to give it a thick, syrupy, dark brown mixture. And it's very corrosive, be very careful with it. It's basically aldehydes and primary alcohols. Secondary alcohols reduce to ketones. That's basically how you make these four reagents. We have others, you know, like, uh, like for example, mo uh, ammonia hydroxide, six molars. You know, with ammonia hydroxide, you, every semester you have to add more ammonia because uh, it loses its strength. An additional stuff test, you know, is the bromine in water. As you can pretty much figure out, you just add bromine in water. You just, you know, pour it in there. You got to do it in a fume hood, obviously, because the bromine is not something you want to breathe in. Of course, sometimes you, uh, the methylene chloride and bromine works a little bit better. You, but again, fume hood. Always leave some, these things really, you should leave in a fume hood. As we mentioned, here's the Brady's reagent, the 2,4-DNPH, the bromine and and of course the Jones reagent. There's our silver nitrate, nitrate, the Lucas, and the chromic acid. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Bye.